Okay, some examples of what we've learned from behavioral economics. Example number one is what's called the endowment effect. What we have when we start shouldn't make any difference, but it does. According to economists, your preferences and your utilities should decide what you do, and it shouldn't matter. So, two examples. Wine. People, there's people out there who are wine collectors who own hundreds and thousands of bottles of wine. And they buy and sell wine all the time. These collectors are constantly buying and selling wine. Well, it turns out that how much they're willing to pay to buy a bottle of wine is always less than they're willing to sell it for. In other words, if you say to someone, okay, here's you know a 1942 whatever, how much are you willing to pay for it? And then you ask them, hey, do you have a 1942 whatever? And they go, yes. And they said, how much are you willing to sell it for? The amount that they're willing to pay for it to buy it is more than the amount, is less than the amount they're willing to sell it for. If I already have it, it's worth more to me. It changes how much I'm willing to sell it for. And that's, to an economist, that's crazy. Okay, we do this, I do sports econ. We do this in sports economics all the time. People should, they draft players that they should trade, but they don't trade them because they're there. Right? We'll give you a simpler example. You take three randomly selected groups of students. And group of student number one, you give them each 10 candy bars. And you say, okay, after class, on the way out the door, you can trade your candy bars in, any candy bars you want, if you want to trade them in for dollar bills. So you can leave with 10 candy bars, $10 bills, or any combination in between, but you start out with 10 candy bars. In another class, you start out giving them 10 $1 bills and saying on your way out you can buy candy bars for $1 a piece. And the third group, you don't give them anything. You say on your way out, grab 10 things, send a combination of dollar bills and candy bars. Economics says you should get the same result in all three groups because diminishing Mars utility, blah, 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 it should be the same. It's not what happens. The group that you give the candy bars to to start, leave with the most candy bars. The group that you give the dollar bills to start, leave with the most dollar bills. And the group that you gave nothing to start with, leave with in between. Okay? People value things they have. Think about stuff in your house that you won't throw out that you don't need. People value stuff that they have, and it messes them up. Number two, framing. It turns out that people prefer positive messages over negative messages. And a good example of that is simple. When credit cards first came out, gas stations tried to put an extra charge. The gas station has to pay a fee. You don't see it, but a gas station pays a fee every time you use your credit card at the gas station okay, or anywhere else. So when, ga when credit cards first came out, gas stations would say our price of gas is you know $3 a gallon, but it's three ten if you're using a credit card. Well, nobody used credit cards. So the gas stations went, okay, the price of our gas is three ten, and you get a discount if you pay cash. Well, now everybody used credit cards. The prices were exactly the same. But when people saw it as a negative, an increased charge, they wouldn't pay it. When they saw it as a positive, a decrease, a discount, now everything's okay. All right? They do this with medical stuff all the time. All the time. So they do studies where, for example, they'll say to you, all right, there's 600 people that live in this little town. And they've all been infected by this disease. We can give them an injection and 200 of them will live and 400, 200 will live. If we give a, use this surgical technique, we have a one-third chance of saving all 600 and a two-thirds chance of saving no one. Or you say to them, we have two possible treatments. One is an injection. If we use the injection, 400 people will die. Well, that's the same as 200 people live, right? There's only 600 people. But they say it negative. With injection, 400 people will die. Then they say with surgery, 33% chance that no one will die. 
and a two-thirds chance that all 600 will die. Well, those are the same two choices. One's just phrased differently than the other, right? So if we give people choice one, almost three quarters of them will pick the injection. And if we give them choice two, only a quarter of them will pick the injection. So how we phrase things to people, people accept positive messages far more than they accept negative messages. Okay, anchoring. Anchoring says when we start a negotiation, that affects where we end it. And again, traditional economic theory says that shouldn't be that way. If you value something a certain amount, that should be how you decide what happens in the negotiation. But it turns out not to happen that way all the time. And I'll, So you're a grocery store or Target or something, and you've got two crockpots, okay? And this is your crockpot, and it sells for $20.00. And here you have a slightly fancier crock pot and it sells for $40. And those are the two crock pots you have out on your shelves. What are people going to buy? Well, it turns out that almost everybody will buy the $20 crock pot and hardly anybody will buy the $40 crock pot. Now, all you do, all you do is put a third crock pot out there. You don't even stock it. It's not there. Nobody can buy it. It's just on the shelf. All right? third crock pot and it says seventy dollars and on each three of these crock, pot, crock pots you've listed the features see all you did all you did was put another more expensive crock pot on the shelf next to the other two you didn't change any of the features of anything you didn't do anything else you don't even actually sell the stupid seventy dollar crock pot well guess what now almost everybody's going to buy the $40 one, not the $20 one. Well, if I'm just maximizing my utility, then I should... It, it, traditional economics cannot, cannot explain this at all. Right? But always put your $70 crockpot out there because it's an anchor. It pulls people away from the $20 one and makes the $40 one look like a bargain. Yeah. It makes the $20 one look cheap. Other examples of anchoring. Limited time offer. How many times have you seen a commercial on TV where they go, if you call in the next hour? Well, they're running that TV commercial all day long on all kinds of different networks. So that's just a lie. To get this special deal, you have to do it. In the no. But people respond to that, and even if they're borderline, if they're thinking, should I buy it, should I not buy it, should I buy it, should I not buy it, the fact that there's this time limit puts an anchor on them, makes them more likely to buy it. My favorite is the limit 12 per customer. How many times have you gone to the store and they say, this is on sale and limit blah, blah, blah. People don't respond to the sale nearly as much as they respond to the limit 12 per customer sign. So they did this study in grocery stores. And what happened is, if I just put, put soup on sale, 10% off, they sold an average of three and a half cans per customer. When they put a sign that says 10% off, limit 12 cans, they sold an average of seven cans per customer. Again, economic theory says that's loony. These people are loony. It's not like they want to buy 20 cans so the 12 matters. The 12, they could have bought 7 whether the limit was there or not. But because you put this sign up, it anchors them. They Is that exciting? Yeah. Loss aversion. People hate to lose more than they enjoy winning. People tend to remember events where something bad happened more strongly than they remember events where something good happened. And supposedly that's because we, you know, we live out in the, in the Serengeti on the plains and like lions are always chasing us and stuff. And so we, get, we respond to these negative things more strongly. And that teaches us how to stay alive when the lion's after us. But be that it is may... We go up to people and we say, all right, you can, 
you have a choice. I will give you $100. Or we'll flip a coin, and if it's heads, you get nothing, and tails, you get $200. Well, if we do that, which is a win, right? You're going to win. Almost everybody takes the $100. Okay? So almost everybody takes the sure $100 over the flip. Now, we go play another game. And in this other game, you owe us money. So we say, look, yeah, you owe us 100 bucks. We'll make you a deal. You flip this coin. If it's heads, you don't owe us anything. And if it's tails, you owe us $200. Well, almost everybody flips the coin. So when it's a gain, they take the sure small gain. When it's a loss, they play the, yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched this stupid show, Deal or No Deal, but people make bad decisions on there all the time. And if you understand probability, you understand what's going on, you can see that they're making bad choices. But they're governed by loss aversion. The total number, total amount of money, if people had done that game right, they would have paid out twice as much money over time. Some people would have gotten less, some people would have gotten more, but more people would have gotten more than other people would have gotten. And the total amount of money they would pay out over time would be much higher if people were actually playing the odds of the game. But they don't. They're loss aversion. They try to avoid pain, try to avoid these losses. And... That game show plays on them because it knows that's what they're going to do. All right? But wait. There's more.